let's think about making a strong application and what funders want to know. This presentation will help you to know what questions funders will ask you and how you can answer these questions well, giving yourself the best chance of being successful. Every application form is different, so read the questions very carefully and make sure that you answer them. Be aware that some questions will have several questions within them, so make sure that you answer each one. Keep your language clear and simple, and it's often useful to work on applications together or to ask other people for their input. This will usually make your application stronger. If you can, ask someone to read over the final version and to do a final check, and make sure that you've attached all the relevant documents and that the right people have signed it. If you do submit an incomplete application, then many funders won't even look at it. So let's now look in more depth at the questions that funders often ask. Funders will always ask about your organisation. They want to know who you are and what you do. Some of the things they may ask are the purpose or aims of your organisation. If you don't have a clear purpose that is written down, then please have a look at module two. The main activities of your organisation. So what you do. Often they'll ask a range of questions about how you run your organisation. This is often called governance. If you think that you'd like to make your governance stronger, then please have a look at module two. There's usually a question about what you want the funding for. So in this case, you would explain exactly what you want to do with the funding. And lastly, funders also ask about the needs of your community. How do you know that this project is needed? If you need help in finding out the needs of your community, then have a look at module three. A common question in funding applications is how do you know the needs of your community? Or how do you know that your project is the right thing to do? To answer this question, tell funders about what community members have told you. So tell them the results of any community conversations that you've had or any evaluation activities that you've carried out. You may also want to use a small number of quotes as examples. Also any gaps that you or your community has identified and explain how your project would fill these gaps. Tell funders about any waiting lists for similar services either within other organisations or within your own organisation. And if you've run activities like this before, then tell funders about your previous track record of success. Include things like the number of people who took part and the positive impact that it had. Lastly, you can also use statistics from your own work or from local national plans, strategies and research. But don't rely on general statistics too much. Most funders will already know them. What they want to know now is the specific needs of the community you work with. So if you know your community well, then you should be able to answer these questions well too. You'll usually be asked details of the difference your project will make. This will include your outcomes, so the change or the difference that you want to see, and outputs, the activities you will do. If you're not clear about either of these, then have a look at module four and develop a project plan. You'll also be asked about how you will know that you've made a difference. What evidence will you gather and what evaluation activities will you carry out? For more information, have a look at module five. Most funders want to know that you've made connections with other organisations, either organisations in your local area or organisations doing similar work or who also work with your community. Funders want to know that you're not working in isolation. Tell funders about any joint working that you do with other organisations and also organisations that you refer people to or who refer people to you. Include details of any networks or forums that you participate in. And it can be a good idea to make links with elected members, local councillors, MSPs and MPs so that they are aware of and can support your work. When funders ask you about the needs, they are often asking about what you have done in the past to find out the needs of your community. But they also often ask, how will you involve your community in the future? To answer this question, tell them about how you currently involve your community in your organisation and how you will continue to listen to people and involve your community on an ongoing basis. This could include opportunities for people who use your services to take more responsibility within a group, for example. It could include volunteering opportunities and training and development opportunities. 
think about how you involve people in decision making, both in the project. For example, do you have regular community conversations or do you have a steering group of local people who meet to oversee and direct the project? And also decision making within the organisation. So do you have opportunities for people to get involved in your board? If you'd like more information, have a look at module three. Another common question is about skills and experience. This could be the skills and experience of your committee, your staff or your volunteers. You can describe the skills and experience that you have as a team and you can also describe people's skills individually. If you've delivered similar projects in the past, then you can talk about your previous skills and experience. Or if it's a new project, then think about the skills and experience you already have that you can bring to the project. Remember to think about skills in relation to both delivering the activity and running your organisation. There may also be a question about equality and diversity. Funders want to know that your services are accessible and that people are treated fairly. In your answer, think about how you involve and include all sections of the community and what practical action you can take to make sure that nobody is prevented from taking part. For example, providing creche, travel expenses, interpreters and thinking about timing of meetings. Some funders may ask you to send them a copy of your equality and diversity policy and it can be good practice to provide training for your committee, staff and volunteer team. This will help demonstrate to funders that you see this as a priority and are doing what you can to promote equality and diversity within your organisation. For more information, please see module two. With all funding applications, you will need to draw up a realistic and accurate budget. This should include staff costs, volunteer costs, direct costs of the activity or project that you want to run and general running costs for your organisation. Think about whether you're asking the funder to fund the full cost of the project or if you're asking them to fund part of it. If you're not asking the funder for the full amount, then funders will want to know if you have other funding in place. This is often called match funding. And if you don't, then they'll want to know your plan for getting it. Match funding could also be in-kind support as well as money. For example, if someone lets you use a hall every week but doesn't charge you, you may want to cost this up in money so that you can show that within your budget. If you're applying for funds over a number of years, you may wish to increase the cost slightly over each year, for example, by about three to five percent. So what will happen when funding comes to an end? If funders ask this, tell them whether the project will come to an end when the funding ends or if you're planning to continue. If you're planning to continue, tell them about your funding plans for the future. It's important that you have all the required documents that funders ask for. Many of these are about how your organisation is managed and run and how you look after your finances. If you don't have these, then please work through the relevant modules to develop them and to make your group work more effectively. So some of the documents that funders will ask to see are your constitution or governing document. If you don't have this, please see module two minutes of your committee meetings or minutes of your annual general meeting. Again, if you don't have these, please see module two. Annual accounts, have a look at module seven. Certain policies, depending on what you're applying for, commonly your equality and diversity policy, or if you're applying for activities working with children or families, your child protection policy. There's some information about these in module eight. Risk assessments, if you need to develop them, then please have a look at module eight. And if you're applying for staff, you will often have to provide job descriptions. Some information is in module eight. If after doing this, you're still unable to produce the document, then it's usually a good idea to contact the funder to get their advice. There's no point spending time submitting a good funding application if it won't be considered due to the lack of correct documents. More tips on applying for funding are available in our funding fact sheet. The fact sheet also covers what to do if you are both successful and unsuccessful, including how to report to funders.